Now that we've looked at different types of graphs, let's look at the shape of these graphs. Uh, this will be really important later because we can do certain statistics depending on the shape that the data makes. Um, so one of the reasons we look at graphs for data is to see the shape of the data's population. This will be important later. So we're usually graphing samples and making conclusions about the population. Um, so these are some distributions. Distribution really just means shape. So if we see distribution and shape, we're gonna link those together. So one shape is bell-shaped, kind of makes a bell. Now, none of them will be perfect, they will be kind of close to these shapes. Uniform is just all the same. Um, left skewed, you'll see like a little tail on the left. So it's kind of bell-shaped, right, but maybe not. Um, but the left side's a little off. And on the right skewed, the right side's a little off. Tail on right. So skewedness is the side that has the tail. Severely skewed, right, it just has larger tails. It's a little hard to tell the difference, but that'll just take practice. But the skewed side is the side with the tail, not the side with the hump. Um, left exponential makes an exponential shape, right? We might have remembered that in algebra. If not, you're learning a new shape, but those are exponentials. They're very, very skewed, right? It's just this one's the tallest. That's the big difference. So the endpoint is the tallest. So it is a type of skewed, right? But it's very special where the endpoint is the tallest. Bimodal, bi means two, mode means, we haven't formally defined that, but those are basically where the humps are. Um, so two peaks for bimodal. And U-shaped is bimodal, but it makes a U-shape specifically. It's not that common of one, but it occasionally pops up. Um, we also care if things are symmetric. So symmetric is one where the two sides of the distribution are mirror images of each other. So bell-shaped was nice and symmetric. Um, this bimodal is symmetric, but not all bimodals are symmetric. Um, the skewness of a distribution is, again, determined by which side the tail is on. Uh, we call those outliers later. So the tail tells you the skewedness. Um, sometimes we call them extreme values, if you don't know outliers yet. So let's look at some examples. So here's a theorem. We're just going to know, know the idea of it, not necessarily memorize a theorem. Um, but if a random sample is taken from a population, all these graphs are us just having samples out of a population, um, then the shape of the distribution of the sample, so the shape of the sample is approximately the shape, the same shape as the population. Right, so we're saying that if we have a sample of like 20 data values, it should be kind of the same shape as if we had all the data values. Um, the idea though is the bigger the sample, the better the approximation. Um, I'll talk about this, but the effects of random variation are greatly decreased. Um, versus if we have a small sample, it can be really hard to see shapes. So these are really rough approximations because it can be very hard to be sure of the shape of the population. It has large effects from random variation, which I will define in a second. So this first these three graphs are all from the same data set, but we only have um, a sample size of 25 in the first one. And so it's really hard to see the shape, right? You could maybe guess, you might guess bell-shaped, but you also might guess skewed. You might guess bimodal, right? It's just hard to tell. So we're like, maybe we should collect more data. So then we get 250. And it definitely looks more bell-shaped, right? You might argue a little bit skewed on this side, but we definitely see it better. But then by the time we're at 9,000, the shape is very clear. Oops, the shape 
is very clear. So as we get larger and larger sample sizes, we can make better predictions about the shape. Um, so let's define random variation. What was that word I was talking about? So random variation um, kind of has to do with sampling error, um, how all the samples are a little bit different. Um, so we rarely see the exact shape. So none of our graphs are a perfect bell shape, but they're kind of bell shaped. Um, so, and that's because of random variation. Um, every data set varies a little, right? Every sample varies a little, and that is what random variation is. Um, if I do an average age of classes, right? One class might have someone who's 40, one class might have someone who's only eight years old, and they're gonna stand out a lot. But as I get bigger and bigger samples, those people maybe stand out less, um, right? And because probably most, of the students are what, like 18 to 25, right? That doesn't mean everyone, um, but that's where we're probably gonna get that peak of students. Um, and so the way we define random variation is if the difference is small in our graph, it's just random variation. So this is kind of bell-shaped, right? But not perfectly bell-shaped. That's called random variation as to why it's not exactly bell-shaped. But if something's really different, then it's something else. It's not random variation. So let's see what I'm talking about. Kind of confusing. Um, so if I roll a die, a dice, a singular one is called a die, um, I expect each number to show up the same, which is called a uniform. So right, one through six are all the same. Um, but the numbers aren't going to be exactly the same. So you'll see in the first graph that maybe two showed up a little bit more than one. And then three and four are about the same, or three and five are about the same, but four and six are a little bit more. But this is almost uniform. That's what random variation is. So this is uniform, but not exact, due to random variation. Random variation basically just means sampling error. Right, samples vary a little. And so I would call that a fair dice, even though it's not exactly uniform. Fair means the numbers are about the same. Um, but the second dice, now something suspicious is going on, right? So look at six. This is no longer, these are all about the same, one through five, but six is significantly different. So this is something fishy is going on with this dice. This is not uniform. Something fishy is going on with six. Right, something suspicious. So this is no longer sampling error or random variation, right? For some reason, six is showing up a lot, so this is not fair. Uh, a casino would get in trouble for having a dice like this. Um, people would be like, why is six showing up so much? Something suspicious is going on. So this is not random variation anymore. So random variation is the idea that we're getting really close to the shape, but not exact. Um, the second graph is not even close to the shape, so that's no longer random variation. Um, we will talk about random variation throughout the semester, so this is not the data master, it's a hard concept to get. We will go over it again.